team camp captain captain my mom is making brownies if you can hear the mixer going sorry but brownies are important in this household Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2021 part 2. I read a total of 25 books this month so I am splitting this up into 5 different parts because if we did all 25 books in one video it would be 6 hours long because I like to ramble so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> To make this easier on myself, I am just talking about e-arcs that I read this month just because I don't have physical copies of them and it's just easier on editing. The first book I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is House of Hollows by Crystal Sutherland. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows the three Hollow sisters, Grey, Vivi, and Ivy, who 10 years ago on New Year's Eve disappeared. They returned one month later to the same alleyway that they disappeared from, naked and with a antique hunting knife in hand. The three sisters all now sport a crescent moon shaped scar along their neck as well as white blonde hair when it used to be black. They each seem to possess some strange abilities that they definitely did not have before their disappearance and their father Gabe starts to become very suspicious of these changes. None of the girls remember what happened to them so when Grey disappears once again it is up to Vivian Iris as well as Tyler, Grey's boyfriend, to find out where she went and it's like the story of that. This was one of my most anticipated releases for 2021 and it definitely did not disappoint. Not to mention this cover is absolutely gorgeous and I would love to have a finished copy on my shelf just so that I could display it. Right from the very first chapter you are instantly hooked into the Hollow Sisters story. There is just so much suspense and mystery surrounding the sisters disappearance and what happened to them. The atmosphere is just so spooky and the descriptions throughout the story are just so well done. I did not expect this book to get as dark as it did, but I loved every second of it. I was so invested in trying to figure out what happened to the Hollow Sisters and how it connected to Grey's disappearance in the future. I was also very intrigued by all of the characters in this. I was so curious about reading more about them and figuring out their backstory. I think that the sisters were all so different from each other that it made it very interesting to read. I did end up taking a star off just because I was able to call a lot of the twists and turns in the story pretty early on but it was still a very enjoyable read and I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something creepy and spooky and atmospheric then this is definitely a great choice for that so four out of five stars. The next book I read is Sunny Song Will Never Be Famous by Suzanne Park and I gave this a three out of five stars. The book follows a girl named Sunny Song who is an up-and-coming YouTube star. She ends up accidentally filming a little PG-13 cooking baking show in her kitchen and her parents decide to send her to a digital detox camp for the summer and it's like the story of that. This was a very fast quick summer read. I think that the characters were interesting. I was invested in figuring out where the story was going to go. I liked Sunny as a character for the most part although I think that she was very self-absorbed and kind of annoying at times. I think that the love interest Theo was cute. He was was very one-dimensional in my opinion and there wasn't really a lot of character development on his part. I think that the romance was very lighthearted. It didn't really get deep at all so that was fine. It was just another summer romance book. It wasn't anything revolutionary. I did like the shenanigans that Sunny got up to on her trip. She did have me laughing a couple of times. I think that the biggest downfall for me with this book was that it was very preachy in nature for the majority of it. It was just constantly shoved down our throats that, you know, social media is bad, stay off your phone, blah blah blah, which is like, you know, everything's good in moderation, which I think was what the author was going for, but it just came off as like, Stop using your phones. Bad. And I 
just didn't care by the end of it. I listened to this on audio. I do think that the narrator did a great job with Sunny's voice. I think it was well done, but I don't think it was anything like over the top, like I said. So three out of five stars. It was just, you know, your average summer romance read. The next book that I have is a graphic novel. It's called Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms by Crystal Fraser. I give this a four out of five stars. The book follows Annie, who is a antisocial lesbian who is just starting her senior year of high school. She is pressured to to join the cheerleading squad by her mother in order to meet some new friends and round out her college applications. Beatrice is the team captain and she is also Annie's ex-best friend. She is a trans girl who is trying very hard not to draw attention to herself. Her parents put a lot of pressure on her in order to be supportive of her transition. When Annie and Beatrice rekindle their friendship, they start to realize that there may be a little bit more than they once had thought was between them and it's like the story of that. This was actually a really cute graphic novel. I really loved the characters. Annie was so unabashedly herself and I loved her character. She was so supportive of Beatrice and all of her friends. I love how Annie stood up for B and taught B how to do that for herself. I also really loved the character development of not only Annie and B but the entire cheer squad as well. Well, it was just really great to read. I think that the graphic novel dealt with a lot of serious topics like transphobia, homophobia, fat shaming, microaggressions, like a lot of things in a very sensitive way that I wasn't exactly expecting. I also really loved the art style of this. It pulled me right into the story from the very beginning and I loved the bright colors that were used. The biggest complaint I have is that this book was so freaking short and I just want more of these characters so I'm really really hoping that we get more and see more of Annie and Bee because they are just so wonderful so I gave this a four out of five stars. I definitely recommend if you're looking for a quick graphic novel to pick up. Next up I have Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan. I gave this a three point five out of five stars. It follows Jubilee, who is a up-and-coming cellist. She is preparing for a very important audition. When she is not practicing her cello, she is working at her stepmother's indie comic store called Verona Comics. Ridley is the son of Verona Comics' biggest rivalry, the geekery, and at a chance encounter at Comic-Con Prom, they end up meeting in an elevator not knowing who either one of them is. When Comic-Con is over, they begin to text each other and as their relationship grows, they hide this from their respective parents. So when Ridley's mental health takes a turn for the worst, Jubilee tries to be somebody that he can lean on for support and it's like the story of that. So going into this, I did not know that it was a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but once I found that out, you can definitely see the similarities between the two stories. It was a lot heavier than I I initially thought it was because I thought it was just like a YA rom-com situation because in the synopsis that is given it doesn't talk about Ridley's mental health but uh, I figured I would include that into the synopsis so that people are aware of what it goes into. It's very heavy on mental health and suicidal ideation so keep that in mind if you're gonna pick it up. I actually really enjoyed the two main characters, Jubilee and Ridley, come from very different family dynamics and we get the perspective of both of those sides. Jubilee's family is very loving and supportive of everything that she does, but then Ridley's family is very abusive and distanced with him. It was just really interesting to see the dynamics of each family and the perspective from both main characters because you got to see such drastic differences in the way that they were raised. And how that affected them mentally. I also really liked how diverse this cast was. Jubilee was pansexual, her best friend's a lesbian, Ridley is bisexual, Jubilee has two moms. I just really liked how it was so casually inserted into the story and it wasn't like a huge deal like some books make it out to be. I also really liked how therapy positive this was and how Ridley got the help that he needed in the end. I also really liked how we got a point of view from a male character who wasn't overly self-confident and cocky. He had a lot of mental struggles and he worked through those and it was just really nice to see somebody who wasn't completely self-absorbed. I think that the book is very easy to read. I read it very quickly but like I said it dove in to topics that I was not expecting so that kind of threw me off a little bit but it was still really enjoyable 3.5 out of 5 stars. 
And then the final book I have is another graphic novel. It is called Picasso. This is by Remy Lay, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows a young girl named Jo, who is feeling a little bit lonely, and so she decides to take a walk in the town. She discovers a dog who seems to be shopping by itself. Interested in this dog, she ends up following it, and she is led to an art class at a local bookstore. The dog enters the art class and begins modeling for the children and she is deemed Picasso from that time on. The children ask Jo if she is the owner of Picasso and if the dog can come back every week to model for them. Feeling lonely, Jo says yes right away and then her lie starts to spiral out of control when somebody complains that Picasso is left off leash. The kids of the art class decide that they are going to start a petition to allow Picasso to continue to be off-leash. So as the petition gains traction and the community becomes divided on the conflict, Jo must continue to try to hide her secret to keep her newfound friends and it's like the story of that. This was a really cute, fun, middle grade graphic novel. The colors are very bright. It instantly sucks you into the story. I thought it was going to be just a very light, fluffy read which it was, but it did dive into deeper topics like family dynamics, community, what it means to be a friend, loneliness, you know, that kind of thing. I really liked the characters in this. I thought they were all wonderful. Picasso was obviously my favorite. I love how he brought the community together in the end. I just think that this was a great read for middle graders, but I think that a lot of older people will also enjoy this. So honestly, this is a graphic novel for everybody. It was super cute. So four out of five stars. All right, everybody. So that was my part two of five wrap up for May, 2021. I will leave the links down below to the other wrap-ups once they're uploaded if you want to check those out to see what else I read this month. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!